Have you ever had the need to do more with your router than your ISP router does? Sometimes you need to do dynamic routing or site-to-site -site VPN between locations. In this scenario, we can use the Edge Router Ubiquiti equipment. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Edge Router from scratch, build the NAT, DHCP, put some access on the interface and get started with it. But before we start, let me give you a quick introduction. My name is David Godibadze. I'm a business IT consultant from New York. I help my clients with IT support and cybersecurity. If you have any needs in your business, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. So default IP of the Edge Router is 192.168.1.1. And that means that on your com computer, on our computer, I should say, we have to have the same subnet, but different IP. For example, this is the same subnet, but instead of that one, we have that two because that one is the edge router, right? So in this case, because we have this access and the computer is directly connected to the edge router on port zero, now we can access the edge router going to the website https colon slash slash 192.168.1.1. And we can use the default username and password, not just can, we should. That would be UBNT username and the UBNT password. And when you first time log in, you might get asked to use the wizard, which we decline. Why? Because a lot of people are using wizard. It's super easy, but you won't be understanding what happened behind the wizard if you don't do it manually. So we'll decline the offer and we'll configure the edge router manually. Step by step, I'll be explaining what we are doing and why we are doing. Stay with me. So here we click the no, of course. This is just sending some data. And this is the scenario. So by default, we have the ETH, Ethernet zero with the IP address. And this is where our computer is connected. Ethernet one, this Ethernet is ready to be used with the ISP. So if you go into configuration mode, you'll see there's a DHCP client enabled on it. The way I want to configure it is to have the ISP on Ethernet zero and all the other ports will be LAN ports, like the local area network ports. For that, I'm going to use switch zero, which is kind of bridge interface. So I can basically take this ethernet interfaces and bridge it with switch zero, and then assign the IP address to the switch zero itself. And all the other interfaces will be bridged with the switch zero. So if the computers are connected to the ethernet one or ethernet two, they can reach the address of switch zero. The way we do it is first we configure the IP address on the switch zero, then we bridge a couple of interfaces to the switch zero, and then we use that interface to access the router. That way we can delete the IP address from ethernet zero without losing the access to the router. And then enable the HTTP client to the ethernet zero, disabling the HTTP client to the ethernet one, because without doing that, you can't bridge the interface with the switch zero. First, we need to disable the manual configuration, manual IP address. Actually, I'm not bridging the both interfaces. I just need to bridge in Ethernet 1, uh, 2, 3, 4. So if you go here and try to bridge the Ethernet 1, you won't be able to do so because Ethernet 1 is using the DHCP client. You see? Error. Cannot have address configured on the switchboard. Even though there is no address configured, DHCP client is there and it's ready to have address configured on it. So we basically need to disable that by doing so. No IP address. And now, not only we can uh, bridge the Ethernet one, but we can also do all the bridging at once. So all the interfaces are now bridged with, with this switch zero. So if you configured, if we configure the IP address on a switch zero, this IP address will be reachable from all the all four interfaces, starting with Ethernet one. Let's do that. Our IP address is going to be 10.0.0.1 slash 24, save. And now I can disconnect my computer from Ethernet zero, connect it to Ethernet one, set up the IP address with the same subnet, and still access the router. You know what? Let's configure the secondary IP address. That way we don't have to change the IP address when we switch. That's the subnet, right? 
0 slash 24. So let's check again. Yeah, both IP addresses are here. Now, if I unplug cable from Ethernet 0 and plug it to Ethernet 1, I should be able to reach this router on this IP. Because remember, Ethernet 1 is bridged to the switch 0. So let me do that. I'm unplugging it and I plug to Ethernet 1. And here, I'm going to be taking this and use the new address. And as you can see, we can still access the router. So let me authenticate again and authorize. And we can close this one. Now, the Ethernet 0 is not connected anymore. You see, it's disconnected. So now we can change it to the ISP to make it ISP port. And since we don't use this, ISP, this IP address on the ISP side, and my ISP emulator simulator, I should say, because it's actually kind of have the internet, will have the DHP server on it, just like many ISPs at home or business. I'm going to change it to use DHCP. That means this inter interface will run DHP client on it. And if there is a DHP server on the other end of this port, the port will get the IP address from the DHP server. So let's review the configuration. We have switch zero with the IP address, bridged interfaces, and then we have Ethernet zero with the DHP client. Okay, now I have a extra cable which comes from my firewall and that firewall interface has the public IP address on it to emulate the, or simulate again, should I say, the ISP uh, address. So I'm gonna plug it to the Ethernet zero that means our edge router will take the IP address from the DHP server of the firewall, simulating the real world ISP. Here, IP address 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 102. So this is the subnet that lives on my firewall, the actual firewall, and it emulates the ISP connection. That's why I use the public IP address. So basically, because of this configuration, now we'll have the default route in the routing table, because I'm also assigning the default gateway from the DHP server. You see it's here. Under the routing, all we have destination, any destination, and here's the de uh, gateway. Now, if I go into CLI, I should be able to ping the public in, uh, IP addresses. Now, if you go here on the CLI, I should be able to ping public IP address. Let's try ping Google DNS. And of course, I can ping it. Now let's configure the NAT. That would be under the NAT, firewall NAT tab. Then we go into NAT and then we add source NAT. Why we need to configure the NAT? Because we have the private IP address on the local audio network side, right? This is the public private IP address. Now this private IP address is not routable in the internet. That means the ISP will start dropping these packets coming from this router unless we translate this subnet into public IP address. Now, you might wonder, but Dave, this is your public IP address inside on your firewall. It's not real public IP address. So how it's going to be routable? Well, I'm doing another NAT on the firewall for this specific subnet. So yes, it will still work. Let's go under the NAT. Add source NAT. That would be description would be internet NAT. Outboard interface is going to be Ethernet zero because remember we configured Ethernet zero to be the ISP interface. Then use masquerade. Now that means that uh, when we translate our subnet, we we don't translate it into a specific IP address. We translate it into interface IP address. Now usually people don't. People don't put these subnets, but I always do in the NAT. I don't like any statement on as a source in the internet NAT access list. So let me put this subnet here and let's translate all the protocols we can handle and save. Now the NAT is configured. So if you go here, not here, if you go on the dashboard, we can see there's a one NAT rule 
there's a DHCP server. Oh, we didn't configure DHCP server yet. Let's configure DHCP server actually, because our computer does have the gateway and we need to have the gateway to access the router to go through the router to the internet. And instead of using the manually configured gateway, let's also configure the DHCP server on the router so we can have the IP address and the gateway and the DNS from the router itself. We go into services and we click add DHCP server. And here we do LAN DHCP server. That's just a name. And then our seven is gonna be 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Our starting IP address is gonna be, let's say 10, because in, we can use the static manually assigned IP address before uh, IP address 10. Let's say switch IP address or anything else. And then we stop assigning the IP address after 100, because that's how I want. You can do whatever uh, numbers you want. That's gonna be our router. So when the computer gets the IP address from the DHCP server that is I'm configured now, the this IP address is gonna be gateway on the computer IP address configuration. And then we can use DNS. That's gonna be Google DNS and that's going to be Cloudflare DNS. Now, if you go into Windows configuration and we switch manually configuration IP to the DHCP client by doing so, I should get the first available IP from the DHCP, which is 10.0.0.10. And the gateway is supposed to be 10.0.0.1. And of course, the end is going to be Google and Cloudflare IP addresses. And here again, and here it is 10.0.0.10. That's my IP address. This is my subnet mask, this is my gateway, this is my DHP server, of course, DNS, DNS, close, close. And now I should be able to ping, for example, Google DNS. Let's try that. And I also should be able to resolve the IP address from Google.com, for example. Now, just to show you that I don't have any other IP addresses on this computer and I'm going through the router for sure, let me give you the IP configuration. You see, that's all the IP address configuration I have on the Windows. So now if I open the tab, I can navigate to Google. This is basically done unless we want to assign some access list on the interfaces, which we are going to do. Let's go into firewall again. And on the firewalls, we can do tab firewall policies and click add rule set. Guys, sometimes you say that I'm talking too fast. I'm sorry, but this is the way I talk. You can use the speed control on the YouTube to slow it down. Internet to inside. But for me, it's really hard to switch to the slow talking now because I'm I don't know, I always talk fast. And you know, it's easier to switch to YouTube speed control, okay? Now, this is the rule set, but it doesn't have any rules inside. We go into action, edit rule set, and now we are going to add rules in it. So what rules do we want to add? Remember, this is for the internet to inside traffic, not towards the router, but towards the inside network. So. Basically, we want to allow the established related traffic and drop any invalid traffic and anything else. Let's start by allowing the established traffic. Now, established traffic is a pretty much TCP session that was initiated from the site and the returning traffic for that TCP session. So let's go accept, established, and Let's put some description and that is. Now we also want to allow related traffic. So if there is any related traffic, returning traffic that is related to the, from the inside initiate traffic, let's say DNS, UDP traffic, DNS response traffic, right? That would be related. So let's 
allow related traffic and OK. Actually, save button, not OK. There's no OK button. Oh, I just noticed that there is no OK button. OK. Now, add new rule and block invalid. So any traffic that doesn't follow the network standard standards will be blocked. So not blocked, dropped. So let's do drop. And then we go into invalid. And we say drop invalid. And save. Now, this rule, rule set, should I say, is ready to be assigned to the interface. And for that, we go into Interfaces. We choose the interface, our public interface, the ISP configured interface, and we choose direction in. Now, when you say out, that means this axis list will be applied to the traffic that leaves the router. Now, in means this axis list I keep saying Axel, but it's a rule set on the edge router um, naming, how the edge router calls it, ubiquity, should I say. Now, direction in means that the traffic that goes from the public towards the in network, not towards the router itself, but through the router to the inside network. That's when we apply, we will apply this, ax, this rule set to the traffic. Now, local means for the traffic that goes directly to the router, not through the router, but directly to the router. Let's say SH connection to the router. Since this set is configured for the inside network, from the public to inside direction, we'll say inside here, not inside, in. And let's create a new rule set. That would be WAN to local. Internet to internet to router. Now this is specifically for the traffic that goes directly to the router. Let's say someone is trying to log into the router, trying to ping, trying to do something. This is where we want to. And I'm going to do rule set. You know what? Can I duplicate here? I think I can. Okay. Not, let me create the clone of this rule set I already have. Let me delete that because that would be faster. I hope. Hey guys, this is Dave from the future. I made a mistake when I was recording this video. So in the default action, you gotta choose drop, not accept. So be careful with that. Even though you have a drop at the end of the rule set, you still better change the default action to drop. Don't use the accept uh, on the default action in the rule set. Perfect. And now let's assign it to the Ethernet 0 on local. And that's it. So now we have two access rules, two rule sets, not access rules or actually two rule sets. One is for the traffic that goes through the router from internet to inside network. And another one is for the traffic that goes from the internet to the router itself. Not through the router, but to the router. Now we want all this to be saved. Let's go, let's click here on the bottom, right? System, scroll down and do save. Oh, we need to uncheck that because for some reason, they force us to use some a value here, which we don't want to, and click Save. So this is it. This is how you do minimum basic configuration on the edge router to replace your ISP router. In the next videos, I'll probably build some VPN or do some extra uh, rule set configuration, NAT, or anything like that, because just basic configuration is not enough for us, guys, right? So. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you like this video or if you want to watch next videos of mine, click the ring bell and choose all. Thanks for watching again. Bye.